Your insurance company paid for the repair. Why should you get it double? Restitution. I had children I had to take back and forth to school. Restitution. All rise for Judge Joe Brown. Whoa! Experience, knowledge, and a passion for the truth. I'm protecting womanhood and promoting manhood. Bringing no-nonsense justice to Americans everywhere. If you listen, you may learn something. It's time for Judge Joe. A friendship is kicked to the curb after a collision with one. Cosmetologist Rodessa Greer is suing her former friend for damage to her vehicle. Defendant Melanie Camacho says her offer to pay the deductible was refused. Now it's Joe time. Ms. Greer, you're suing your former friend, Ms. Camacho. Uh, you allege that she wrecked your 2004 Pontiac Grand Am and then refuses to pay for the damage. Yes, sir. I believe you say uh, the defendant was visiting you at your home. Is that right? Yes, sir. What'd she say she wanted to do? Okay, um, on May 13th, she drove my car. She was going to go run an errand. Errand. What was she going to go do on the errand? She was going to go pick up some money. Okay. Yes, sir. As she was going to go pick up the money, it wasn't 10, but 15 minutes later, she called me back and she said that someone hit her in the back. Which, sir, I had no damages to the back of my car at all. She said it was a white marquise. The police came out, also the ambulance came out. Because from the airbags deploying, Melanie had a bruise on her arm. Okay, but sir, how could someone hit her in the hey, back of your arm? Y'all need to go high, could, whatever, whatever. That, that's the stuff that you would do on final arguments. You're right now presenting evidence. Tell me what you have as proposed facts. You arrived on the scene. Did you go to the scene? Yes, sir. You got I did. to go. She had a bruise on her arm. Yes, sir. Were the front airbags deployed? Yes, sir. And the windshield. You say you looked at your bumper, rear bumper, and there was no damage to the rear bumper. No, your honor. All right. No damage. Now you to the presented rail. a an estimate. Yes, your honor. There is severe damage to the undercarriage of the vehicle, the underside, the suspension, etc. You have the total damage of three thousand nine hundred and eighty-nine dollars. Yes, Your Honor. You have one hundred dollars for car rental. Yes, sir. And you have an insurance deductible that you had to be responsible for in the amount of five hundred dollars. Yes, sir. Now your insurance company paid out three thousand three hundred and eighty-nine dollars. Is that right? Yes, Your Honor. Why are you saying that you should be paid twice? Because of the fact of Melanie did not call me. She had no concern or anything. It just seemed like that she was not going to pay me at all for anything. She promised me that she was going to pay for the car. She knew someone that worked at a car repair shop that was going to fix the car. And oh. it never got done. It never got done. Melanie yeah. lied about everything. She said she wanted to hit her in the back. No one hit your her in the back. Your insurance company paid for the repair. Yes, Your Honor. Now, why should you get it double? For damages, restitution. I mean, I have children. I had to take back and forth to school. I didn't have any car or anything. Oh, my. <laughs> restitution. Oh, goodness gracious. Well, how do you do this? You now have a theory that you're entitled to be paid for the property damage restoration, which was $3,989. You're supposed to be paid that by the defendant after the insurance company has had your vehicle fixed. You should be reimbursed for the $500 deductible you had to pay. But then you've got this theory down here that because of what the defendant did, your projected, your insurance premiums are going to increase. So you say that because it cost the insurance company $3,989, they are going to raise your insurance by precisely that amount. They already did, Your Honor. By $3,989. No, not that much. Well, then, how much did they raise it? Um, a lot of money. My insurance is a what lot of money. What is right a now. lot of money? Um, I'm paying, um, actually $400 a month for my insurance, and that's a lot of money. Uh, wait, how much were you paying? Um, like two-something at first, sir. You don't know? Um, well, the car actually, Your Honor, is in my dad's name. 
It's under my dad's name. Who's paying the insurance? I'm paying the insurance you're on a well, Why didn't you come in here and find and tell me, Judge Brown, before this accident, my insurance was 200 etc. per month. Now it's 400 etc. per month. You go, duh, well, I guess it was about 200. You're the one that's suffering the harm. Don't you know how much harm you're suffering? Yes, Your Honor. And by the way, that's not what they do. They take this as not what they've had to pay out, but based on the perception of increased risk, how much do we need to charge her for what we are likely to have to pay out based on this uh, driving record that we have on her? That's what they're doing. It's going to work out a lot more than that. But in any event, you've made out a basic case, so we'll come back to the damages. All right. Now, what do you have to say? Um, I, gave, I was given permission to use her car to go to the store. What were you going I... to get? I was going to the store to get some alcohol. No, she was not your right, own. That's what she said in her answer. No. She that's said, not the truth. That, why are you going to say that? You don't know what she told you was, I mean, I'm going to go pick up some cash. What she says in her answer, which is sworn to, is I wasn't going to wind up at the liquor store. I, I imagine she get... went and got some cash and then was going to the LIQ to make a liquor run. Well, she ain't even make it there, Your Honor. <laughs> We'll be right back with Judge Joe Brown. I made the U-turn. I got rear-ended from the back. Somebody hit me from the back. It wasn't a hard hit or anything like that, but I hit the curb. The airbags deployed. I had an injury to my left arm. And later today... Danzig jumped the fence, came rushing over, and attacked Peaches and bit her on the uh, rear. Uh, causing lacerations to both left and right thighs. It's Joe time after this. We're back with Judge Joe Brown. The plaintiff in this case says her friend borrowed her car to go pick up some money. She says the defendant was in an accident and lied about the details, so she wants restitution. Let's see what the judge has to say. You were going to the liquor store. Yes. So did you make it to the liquor store? Not no, that I did it not. really makes a difference. Hmm? No, I did not. All right, what happened? I was making a U-turn, and a car hit me from the rear. I, um... Your Honor, that's not the truth. Stay quiet. Don't oh. interrupt. All right. Somebody hit me from the back. It wasn't a hard hit or anything like that, but I hit the curb. The airbags deployed. I had an injury to my left arm, which I have evidence of. Um, that's your problem, not hers. Thank you. Right. So I then returned. I called her and told her about the... Accident. I returned. She told me to bring the car back to the apartment, which was not too far away. I took the car there. She called the police. The police came. The ambulance came. I told the ambulance I did not need any assistance because I was in school for medical. I just graduated from there. So from that, they um, said okay or whatnot. I told her that look, I would pay let her. Let me just cut you off. Uh -huh. Looking at the description of the damages, it looks like you ran over an island in the middle of the road. Nobody hits you because in order to take that multi-ton vehicle and make it do what it did, somebody would have had to have really whacked you from the rear. There is not a scratch, a mark, a dent, or a ding in the rear. Now, may I suggest to you that the fact that uh, you've come up with uh, contention that might be hard to disprove, that doesn't have anything to do with it. What it is, is as we see often, there was a bailment. A bailment arises when you receive into your custody and or control, either actual or constructive, and in this case, when the keys were tendered to you, you must return that personal property to the owner in the same condition that you received it in, absent ordinary wear and tear. What happened is not ordinary wear and tear. What happened to it, how it happened to it, is your problem because you're liable to the property owner for all of the damages. Now. What you give me is no item of damages because I got to speculate as to what they're supposed to be. You have to prove, one, liability, 
and two, you have to prove damages. Now, the only damage item you've got adequate proof in here for is the $500 deductible that your insurance company did not collect for you. Your insurance policy has a subrogation agreement, so in any event, if you got from the defendant the amount of money that would be necessary to pay for that, your agreement with your insurance company is it has to go to them. So your insurance deductible is not what's promised. That's what you had to pay out of pocket. So you get that. That's proved. Did you give me any receipts for rental vehicles? Yes, Your Honor, I have the receipts. You did? No, and sir, I didn't give you any, but I well, have Well, you hand them up now, because I didn't see any in this record. Okay, I'm developing x-ray vision, and I can perceive that that was $100 that you can hardly make out. All right, your award, $600 in your cost. Please, pay attention to what's going on. Now. And this courtroom is now in recess. Hit and run. Ironic, because that's exactly what the defendant did to the plaintiff. Hit something with her car and run from the bill until now. Reduce judgment for plaintiff. We're on to the next case. Please raise your right hand. Emergency services officer Miles Wagner is suing his neighbor for vet bills and travel expenses. Defendant Sean D. says the plaintiff had his dog euthanized. Let's see, Mr. Wagner, you're alleging that a Boxer Shepherd mix owned by Mr. D. bit your dog and you as you were walking your three dogs down a certain street here in California. This was about 60 feet from the defendant's home, and it looks like the animal jumped a fence. That's correct, Your Honor. And Mr. D, you say you don't owe anything because you did your part to keep uh, the late uh, Danzig off of the street. The dog has been euthanized. That is the order of the animal control services. Correct. And you say that's sufficient punishment. And you also say, or through your witness, that the plaintiff knew that Danzig was territorial and still he continued to walk his dogs close to your fence. Yes. You first, sir. Now, I believe this uh, is somewhere on or about the 12th of September, year last. It was September 13th at 7 o'clock. September 13th. You were about 60 feet from the defendant's home. What happened? I was finishing up the walk, uh, evening walk that I take with all three dogs. We were approaching the, uh, just past the defendant's house, actually, on the opposite side of the street. I stopped for a moment to talk to a, a neighbor. Danzig jumped the fence and came rushing over and attacked Peaches and bit her on the uh, rear, uh, causing lacerations to both the left and right thighs. Uh, shook her up. In order to break the fight up, I had to pick the dog Danzig up by the tail, in the process getting my uh, finger bitten before I actually managed to grab the tail. Your thumb? My thumb. All right. You got medical treatment for this. That's correct. We'll be back with more Judge Joe Brown in a moment. If you knew uh, that there was a dangerous, maybe a uh, territorial animal uh, near your house, would you, if you could go around, would you go around? It's Joe time after this. We're back with Judge Joe Brown. The plaintiff in this case says he was walking his dog Peaches when the neighbor's dog, Danzig, rushed over and attacked his pet. He says he was injured in the process of pulling Danzig off. Let's get back to the case. Now, I've got your medical and veterinarian bills. That's correct. I took the dog to uh, a 24-hour emergency veterinary hospital in approximately 80 miles from where I lived because I wanted a full care medical facility that could take now, care of Now, you're an emergency services operator, is that right? Officer, yes, sir. All right, officer. Okay, now let me ask you a question. Did you get... Uh, medical leave for the thumb bite? I had to take uh, vacation leave for it. Okay. I've read your sworn accounting, sworn complaint. Let's go to the defendant. Why shouldn't you be liable for the plaintiff's medical and veterinarian bills? Well, first of all, Judge Joe Brown, I 
spent a lot of money building a six-foot fence around my property to keep my dogs inside my fence, never thinking that they would jump over a six-foot fence. Ah, uh, you had a reason to build that fence, haven't you? Yes, and I... Two prior occasions, the same dog has bitten other dogs, has he not? Uh, yeah. Okay. And, and, That's uh, correct, my dogs. Anyways, the, um, I built a six-foot fence thinking it would c contain my animals, and obviously it, it wasn't big enough. <laughs> Who would think they would jump over a six-foot fence? I'd have a hard time jumping over that. But I did have signs up on my fence also saying, beware of dog. And I think that Miles knew that the dog was well, territorial. Well, wouldn't that have to do with coming upon your property rather than being on the public well, streets? It's a sign saying something. Beware saying of dangerous something. dogs. But I right. mean, the public streets are for the common good and common use. Right. People ordinarily walk themselves and our domestic animals, Should be able particularly to dogs and pets, down the street. But if you knew uh, that there was a dangerous, maybe a territorial animal uh, near your house, would you, if you could go around, would you go around? Well, let's put it this way. Public peace, dignity, and order. This is not well for the public peace. May I say something? Uh, you want to come up? What's the deal? I was there the day that... Yes, the... and you say that the dog was known to be territorial, so why didn't the plaintiff do something about it? Right. Well, why would you continue to walk by? Why been an would incident? you feel that you have a right to walk down your street in a high crime area? Might not be prudent, but don't you have the right? Absolutely. But So you have right. criminals out there making it unsafe for people to walk through a high crime area. What happens when you have a dog that does the same thing? I would avoid it. You know, and he could hear you how would avoid it. I would avoid the but dog. We can't have society based on to have thugs there. You're supposed to avoid the thugs, so they're thugs. Now, does that make sense? No. So, if you, the rule is, is if you've got the dog, you've got to restrain the dog. It's not I was surprised because the dog could jump this fence. Closed captioning sponsored by... Did a jealous ex ruin your property? Call 1-877-JOES-LAW or visit JudgeJoeBrown.com. Now, what we're talking about here are out-of-pocket expenses. I've got a veterinarian bill here that's $2,176.09, which considering the description reflected in the veterinarian's report is not excessive. Uh, is, is that just for the veterinary report bill, or is that the... His, his well, hand? that's the veterinary bill. He's not even claiming his own personal bill for getting bitten, which would bring in that uh, recompense, his own pharmaceutical bill, which would demand that it be uh, compensated for, pain and suffering, which would be adding the two of them together and multiplying it by two to four times well, and mean, added it in the column, and then loss of earnings capacity for missing work. I don't even know that he was bit by my dog, though. Well, he was. was. Dogs, he got the was, medical report. Well, there was four dogs. He's around. got the medical report on that and the bills for that. Basically, a lot of his insurance paid for that. So he's entitled to a claim for that. I'm not going to allow your gas bill, but you still are entitled to the compensation for time off from work. So he's on all fours, literally, just like that dog on his case. So what I'm awarding you is I'm going to round the 2906 off to 3000 That'll be your reward, along with your cost. This courtroom is now in recess. The defendant didn't expect his dog to jump a six-foot fence, but he should have expected another attack as his dog had done it before. Plaintiff wins. We'll be right back. We are back. One bite might be an accident to a pattern. The third time was not a charm for the plaintiff or his pooch. The defendant's dog proved he was a bully. The defendant knew it. He's liable. To submit your case to Judge Joe Brown or to find out how the law can work for you, go to JudgeJoeBrown.com.